I remained in denial, which is the funniest thing as a physio. I am so fiercely positive that I was like, I'll wake up tomorrow and it will be okay. I'll wake up tomorrow and it will be okay. So I wanted to continue the holiday. I am so excited. I've been trying to get this girl on my podcast for like over a year. I think ever since I met her in Dubai, probably a couple of years ago. Lily Sabri, welcome to the show. Hello, thank you so much for having me. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> we just had a chat for about half an hour before we even started this podcast because so many things have happened in your life and I'm so excited for you to share with the audience. Um, guys, if you don't know, Lily's been on YouTube making YouTube videos for almost three years, but in the last 30 days, she's grown over 200,000 subscribers, taking her hundred, three years to get to 100K, and then boom, just like that, in 30 days to nearly 300,000 subscribers. And this is what this show is all about. It's about its grit, the determination that you need. So Lily, how do you feel now? You're in Dubai, you're from England, like now you have almost 300,000 and, you know people watching you do workouts how does it feel it, like one word to summarize surreal I can't I can't even begin to get my head around it like on one hand all of my dreams are coming true because I'm reaching more people I'm helping more people on the other side I just can't I can't believe it <laughs> it's crazy it is so crazy very thankful it's been amazing to watch and I log onto your YouTube. I'm like, wow, she's like grown again. Like, I'm like, yesterday she was at like 200. Now she's at like 269. It's just like, <laughs> it's amazing. So we're really going to talk about the grit that it took to get where you are. Because a lot of people right now are seeing people in this situation that we're in with the coronavirus, seeing this, having this like overnight success. And what they don't yeah. see is the years and the grit and you know the endless consistency that it's taken to get there. So let's do a recap of who you are, where you're from, where you live now, how you got to Dubai. Like, tell us all the things about you. Okay, so I'm Lily. I'm from the UK, just like you. Um, Background-wise, I'm a physiotherapist, so that's what my degree is in. I graduated eight or nine years ago now, so quite a long time ago. I've always been massively into sports, um, but I kind of was one of them where I was like, oh, I love the thought of being the athlete, but I also love the thought of being the physio who helps the athlete. So it was a little bit of a confusing a confusing space. Sport-wise, I was a national level swimmer, so I've always been quite high level sport, but when I went to university, that calmed down a little bit, as you can imagine, it normally does. Um, so when I came out of uni, I always knew that I wanted to work in sport, I started off in the NHS, which was amazing, incredibly grounding, learned so much, particularly from a teamwork point of view. Um, but off the back of that, I was like, no, football, soccer, for you guys in the US, um, was where I want to be. So I started off right at the bottom, like entry level, volunteering for a League Two football team. So the lowest level of professional football, but still incredible. Um, and basically, I was working full time in the NHS and four evenings a week. I was going straight from the NHS to the football club and Saturday and Sunday weekends as well. So the grit started early on. <laughs> the grit started nine years ago. I was getting paid zero. Um, I was on a very low salary in the NHS, but incredibly rewarding work helping people. Um, and the grit paid off. I ended up climbing my way up the ladder. Football, soccer is a very unusual place whereby I'd say 99% of the employers are male. Um, so as a woman, it's it's quite difficult and quite challenging to um, work your way up, trying to put this in a diplomatic way. But yeah, it's, it's, it's unusual for a woman to get quite high up. Um, so after quite a few years worth of work, I ended up in a championship level club, Watford Football Club, um, which was incredible, an incredible year. I learned so much and got recognized, got noticed for who I am and the good work that I do. And then I ended up at Chelsea Football Club in a Premier League uh, football club for an academy, for their academy. So incredible. It was that point where I then uh, was asked to do some Pilates with the boys. I trained up as a Pilates instructor. Yeah. Um, and I always remember this. Is, yeah. Yeah. It was from that. And with boys as well, with well, men, I should say, uh, professional level athletes. 
And I went in and there was this big whiteboard where they'd have everything that you were doing that day. And on it, it said like 1 p.m. Pilates with Lily. And I remember this was actually Watford. And the boys coming, I'm not doing Pilates. What's Pilates? I'm not doing that. We're not going to stretch. And I was like, okay, that's yoga, but <laughs> fine. Um, so I basically developed a concept which was combining Pilates with HIT. So combining that real core strength, core stability, core focus with high intensity movements at the same time to keep them interested, but to also prove that this is not easy. <laughs> this is going to challenge you. And this is the fundamental of what every sports person needs. They need a strong core with coordination. Um, it took off. The boys actually ended up, some of them loving it. And then I set up classes off the back of that locally in my area, set up an Instagram account to promote the classes um, purely to promote the classes, I know. <laughs> um, and it started growing. The Instagram grew organically, not, not fast, but organically. And I was like, okay, there's, you know, there's room to uptake here a little bit. Started showing my own journey. Instagram started taking off. And I was like, right, okay, you know, we can make a business out of this. Then I was like, what about YouTube? This is where Alex comes in, my partner. We met when I was hosting at BeFit, which is the largest women's only uh, fitness festival in Europe. So I was like on the microphone hosting. He was there for one of his friend's brands and we met. And I would say probably the third sentence he said to me is, are you on YouTube? And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> like, I barely have time for Instagram, a full-time job in the NHS, working with a football club, and to do YouTube as well. No, I am not. And he said, the biggest regret you will have is not setting up YouTube. You, your personality belongs on, on YouTube. And I've always had this weird relationship with Instagram. I love it, don't get me wrong, but particularly in the early days, I modeled as well as I'm a physiotherapist. And the two don't necessarily go in hand, hand in hand with that all that well. And what I don't like about Instagram, particularly in the early days before stories, is that you're judged off of an image. You are purely judged off of how you look. And most of those judgments are incorrect <laughs> most of the time. So YouTube, I guess, was a place where I could get my personality across as well as my knowledge. You were a huge inspiration, huge. You were one of the first people that I ever watched your videos. And I was like, I want to achieve what that girl's achieved. How can I do it? I know it takes hard work, but I don't even know where to start. I don't even own a camera. I don't know how to work a camera. And um, lo and behold, three years later, we're just grafting our backsides off. And, you know, finally, it's, it's, we're getting seen and we are managed to help people. And, you know, videos from three years ago were on 1,000 views and now they're on 50,000 views. And it's just, it's all surreal. It's all crazy. The journey has been incredible, but overwhelming. And I don't know where it's going to go. <laughs> and that's the best I'm part. just so excited for you because your workouts are so good. Guys, if you're not already oh. following Lily, I'm going to put all of her details in the description. <laughs> you guys too. I love them. Like you come up with these days. I've been creating new ab workouts the other day. I was just playing around. I'm like, I'm going to create something new. Like I'm going to put my leg up this way and see how this feels. I'm like, oh, fuck, that really hurts. That feels good. I know. I know. So There's no doubt for them. <laughs> exactly. So Alex basically was your manager after three sentences. Pretty much. Yeah. And we weren't even together at that point. Then the love story began. Um, but yeah, <laughs> he planted the seed. Um, I wasn't a consumer of YouTube, so that's the kind of interesting part. So I really wasn't a consumer. I'd gone on for the odd thing, but I certainly didn't do workouts on YouTube. Um, and I'd never watched a vlogger in my life. Like I'd never seen a vlog. I didn't know what it was. Um, kind of the early people that I was watching from a workout point of view, what you were doing, I was like, oh, come on, please. And can we go to these exotic locations? That was the other thing. I, was like, I, I wouldn't mind working out on a beach as well not knowing anyone near how much hard work went into it. Um, and also Sarah's day was a huge one from a blogging point of view. Obviously Casey Neistat, um, Jan Olsen, they were kind of the early people that I was watching and how I kind of started to realize the power of YouTube and how you can really get yourself across as a, as a personality and help people um, on a way deeper level than the surface level of, of Instagram at the time. So yeah, I fell in love with it as a consumer. So I think also if anyone's watching this and thinking, 
you know, can I start YouTube myself? You have to be a consumer. You have to understand the, the product that you're working with, which I didn't initially. And then as soon as I did, it started clicking. And I was like, okay, this is what it takes. So what do you say to someone right now who's like, hey, I, I want to be an online creator, but like, it's so saturated. Like, fitness is so saturated. There's so many people doing it. There's not space for me. Like, what's yeah. your view on that? Um, to a certain extent, I can see where you're coming from. However, my biggest, biggest, biggest advice is be authentic. Work out, and this is the hardest part, like work out what you represent. What, it, what is it that you really, really want to get across? Like for me, one of my biggest strengths, which has taken a really long time to work out, is empathy. Um, and I always have been, but I never knew it. You know, my mum's a nurse, and when we were discussing when I was like 13, 14 years old, what do you want to be, what do you want to do? I was like, I don't know, but I hate seeing people in pain. I love motivating people and I also want to help people. It's just ingrained into me. So how can I use them skills then on an online platform? Alex is an incredible creator. Like he is, he comes up with stories that you'd never, ever imagine. And sometimes I have ideas and I'm like, how can I physically make that happen? I couldn't put together the vlogs I do without Alex, you know? So it's kind of working out where your strengths lie. Um, but number one, where your strengths lie, but also what do you want? What do you want to do? What do you want to achieve? Because I can guarantee if you put that together, there will be a space for you. There will be a niche amongst all the other noise that's going on, but just try not to like really do exactly the same as someone else. You've got to be slightly different and be yourself. That's literally it. Be yourself. Exactly. Because if it's what you really want to do, that's what you should do. It's like, there's yeah. always going to be room. And I think that when you go look at all these other people and people might compare, they might be like, oh my goodness, like this person's growing here. You know, how's this person doing that? I just go, wow, this just inspires me that, you know, I can do it too. Or that I'm getting yeah. inspiration from that person. So I think if you're listening right now and you're like, you know, maybe you've lost your job or you're like, you, you're more at home and you're like, I want to take a pivot in my career yeah. it's like if that's something that you really honestly want to do and you're dedicated to it it's gonna work it's gonna take time it's gonna take effort and you've got to be consistent but if it's what you really love like fitness was your thing like you love helping and motivating people so as soon as you start making those videos on youtube right did you feel a responsibility to keep making them yeah <laughs> so i think like we were just discussing before you know for the first two years nearly certainly year and a half i built up to twenty thousand subscribers i remember the moment we hit 10 it was massive like it was one of the biggest achievements of my life which is crazy but you know you've got to think about if you had those ten thousand people in a stadium how many people that actually is it's a phenomenal amount of people who are putting their trust in you who are being inspired by you who are being motivated by you it's actually the biggest a hundred people is a lot, you know, but it's actually putting that into context. That's a lot of people and getting feedback means so much. So every single comment that you read, every single, we get emails through where we've changed people's lives. It means so much. It really does. There is no better feeling that even earning a lot of money, there's no better feeling than helping someone and getting that feedback that you've changed someone's life. N nothing better uh, hands down and that for me is enough and that has been enough for the last two years where we've had you know up to 30,000 people and we're getting that feedback it feels incredible and um, now that we're growing at such a crazy rate it's actually quite hard to keep up because I want to keep that family feel I want to keep engaging with the women that I work out with it it's like 95% women um so sorry if guys are watching this you as well but mainly women and um, and I want to keep that close relationship and it's tough because it is it's Alex and I it's literally us doing it and you know two people versus nearly 300,000 people it's we're trying our best <laughs> that's all I can say well, I've seen the comments. You're helping so many people, and you're going to reach even more people over the next, you know, even the next hour. We'll be subscribed to thousand. Let's let's see where they are at the end of the show. Um, so, what did you do for the very first YouTube video? You're like, okay, I've decided I want to be on YouTube. All right? People decided they want to have, you know, want to create something. What's the very first thing that you did? Our first one, um, I say I, R, because Alex helped with filming it, uh, was a workout video. We were um, in Marbella at the time. I was hosting a retreat or part hosting a retreat. 
Um, and I had no, I, I had no idea what I was doing in terms of the camera side of things. Alex was just like, listen, you're good at talking, just get in front of the camera, talk. I think my intro was probably about three minutes long and then we started the workout. So obviously people by 30 seconds in were like, when is this workout gonna start? I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know you should get kind of stuck in. Um, but it was a core based one and it was bringing in my physio knowledge. So again, it was kind of working out what I'm good at, where my skills lie, what's different about what I'm doing um, and delivering that. We just packaged it in the wrong way. But when I actually watched back the video, the value in it was very, very good. We just didn't know how we were packaging it up. So first video wasn't a raving success, <laughs> um, but we did help some people, which is great. The first video is always, has to be terrible. It has to be. There's no way that you can get it all perfectly done, especially if you're brand new, you don't have all the equipment. You can't even hear me in my brain. <laughs> The sound of the waves in the background, I have no mic on. So it's like, it's slightly blurry. It's shot on a $150 Sony camera. It's got the terrible iMovie, like green, like graphics at the bottom. I mean, yeah, it's, it's awful. But like, and I look back now, I'm like, oh my goodness, how far have we come? But you yeah. have to realize that you have to start with it, with the basics, with absolute the basics. So you talk about Alex a lot and he's like your, your sidekick, your second, your, your right hand man. Like, how is the relationship with you guys working together? Because, you know, sometimes that's an interesting dynamic. Like, how do you guys work together? So we, obviously, moving to Dubai was kind of like a big step. Alex studied um, architecture. So that's his background. But he's always been incredibly creative, loved anything to do with tech. <laughs> um, and, yeah, just creating videos has been like a pastime hobby. Um, we moved to Dubai two years ago now. We weren't working, we were working together part, partly um, and all of the ideas were kind of shared together, but I was still doing most of the editing myself. Alex would help out when he could. He taught me all of that side of things. Just closing this down. Speaking of which, Alex, I might need your help. <laughs> How ironic. <laughs> How do I get rid of that thing? <laughs> There you go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it just comes in. There you go. He just goes like that and it's done. Happy um, appearance. <laughs> so yeah, we started officially working together full time in January. So four months ago. Um and it's been it's been a transition. It's been interesting i mean obviously it means that we're spending all our time together um from the moment we wake up to the moment we go to sleep we are working together we're editing together um we've been more productive 100 percent. like the growth has happened since we've gone full time together and you have no idea until you've got that extra pair of hands how much of a difference it makes like actually halving your workload is phenomenal like i'm sure you can relate to this like doing everything yourself is such hard work and it means that you don't do things as well um, and you also are left with zero energy in your tank and one thing that I always say I get energy from the audience particularly during lives like I'll go into a live workout with 80% audience 80% um, energy and I'll come out with 100% energy because it's it's a passing of energy right but when you're then editing and you're uploading and you're trying to think of ideas for a next video and you're trying to do a thumbnail you are left with minus it's unbelievable how tiring it is so just sharing the workload from the physical workload but also the ideas and the brainstorming you your creative mind just suddenly opens because you're like wow i have more energy i can now actually think about this like I always say my best ideas come when I'm in the shower, which is so true. It's when I'm most relaxed, right? And they just come and I'm like, oh, wow. Like, why did that come when I was in the shower again? It's because I'm so relaxed and I'm like re-energizing. And that's what I feel has happened having an extra pair of hands on board. Like I'm able to actually think of ideas again. And so by having that extra pair of hands, it's really, really helpful because it creates up well, it creates, it frees up your creative mind. Um, so you're able to kind of come up with new ideas and bounce them back off of each other. Also, um, you know, we're always like 
preaching about looking after your body, looking after your mind. But one thing I would say when you're trying to do everything yourself at a million miles an hour, it's really, really, really hard to practice what you preach and um, to actually have downtime. Like I've even started trying to meditate before I go to bed just because I'm struggling to switch off. I'm really struggling to switch off because you can always do more and how much is enough, right? Um, and that's, I guess, what makes people successful because it's that drive and that grit, um, but you do have to rest your mind as well as your body. And that's something I'm, I'm learning quite quickly um, because there's always more to do, but I need to try and space that out as much as possible. I know, and I can validate that because when we were asked, texting the other day over Instagram, uh, I was like, do you want to do this time next week? Because I'm like, obviously she's awake. But she's like, well, no, I can't. It's 2 a.m. I'm like, okay, well, go to bed. <laughs> go to sleep, girl. Go to bed. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. I know. And that's another thing because, uh, you know, a lot of our audience are in the States. They're all over the world, which is, I again, I can't get my head around it. Like, what? Um, but being from the UK, living in Dubai, I kind of presumed that most of our audience would be in those two regions. And the UK is incredibly strong for us. And I think it always will be because I am British. Um, but the States has been really, really growing. And obviously, because of that, we need to find a time for lives that work for as many people around the world as possible, which means I'm teaching my lives. It was 9.30 p.m. Now it's 8.30 with daylight savings, which is a blessing. Um, but yeah, after a live, I am so hyped. <laughs> like it's phenomenal, the energy I get from the girls. So I'm like, yeah, I'm ready for the day. And it's 10 p.m. Um, so I'm trying to trying to calm down as much as I can in the evenings, which isn't easy. <laughs> I can relate to that. Someone the other day made a comment. And they're like, are you high on drugs or something? I'm like, no, I'm, actually, I'm high on life. I'm like, I'm having so much fun. Like, this is the best thing ever. I know. I know. It really is. Um, you know, it's interesting what you say, you know, having that extra pair of hands. And I want people to understand it took two years for you to get an extra pair of hands. You know, when yeah. I was starting my business too, like I was, you, you have to do everything at the beginning. And then eventually yeah. I got someone that would help me with one part and then another, yeah. but like, it's a, it's a process. Um, yeah. And so now you and Alex full time going into, into your stuff. This is amazing. I love it. Yeah, it's incredible. I mean, even like from a financial side of things in the early stages, you don't have the money to, you know, like saving up for a camera is such a big decision and then a ring light you know that doesn't come cheap either and then you start thinking about audio like youtube is not cheap and it is so far from easy oh my gosh it is so out of all of the platforms and this was the hardest thing for me you know alex is a big consumer of youtube and he said if you can crack youtube you're on to a winner um and I didn't believe it. I didn't know that, first of all. And the other thing is, you know, for you to create a video for YouTube, it can take days and you can get a hundred views and it can be so demoralizing. But you've got to know, number one, that you're doing it for the right reasons, that it's helping people. Those hundred people who have viewed it have really benefited from it. And like third and finally, it stays there forever. Instagram, it gets lost. You'd never scroll all the way down on Instagram. YouTube, you can have a video that you created three years ago and it gets picked up three years later and suddenly gets way more views. So you just got to keep going. <laughs> you really have. It's, it's tough, particularly when the, you know, the side of things that you're doing is physical as well. Um, for us, you know, we're teaching, we have to give our everything during that class that we're teaching but then we have to do the mental editing side of things and planning it, it's a tough one to crack but it feels so good there's nothing better than than helping people with a youtube video yeah i can completely relate and what was the reason that you guys moved to dubai i'm always interested when someone lives in a different country than they're from oh, obviously yeah. you know i live in america from england but like how did you guys get to dubai so we, I've always wanted to live abroad always. Um, and I guess I was kind of going through that stage where I was like traveling everywhere. Um, and Australia was up there, 100% up there, which I think it is for a lot of people from a lifestyle point of view. The States as well, LA has always been somewhere I'd love to, and New York actually. Um, but honestly, my biggest criteria was sun, sea and sand. <laughs> like It really is that simple. Um, I'm half Mediterranean and I think it's kind of like in my blood, I cannot be in the cold. Like I hate the thought of being in the cold. And London is a phenomenal city. I 
love London. It will always be home. Um, but for me, the feeling of being outdoors is so important. He'll go mad, but if we ever have children one day, um, I would love them to grow up somewhere where they can be outdoors. It's really, really important to me, um, particularly like from a sport point of view. Um, Dubai, I was visiting a lot because I had friends who were working here, physio friends. Alex got offered a job here. And um, so when he got offered the job here, it was kind of like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, and the beauty is, you know, at that point I was full time online and uh, not, I was earning zero money from, from YouTube, but I was earning money through Instagram. And um, so, you, you know, I, I had that opportunity to be kind of anywhere in the world. The time difference is only three or four hours from the UK. Um, so yeah, we took the plunge and two years later, we're still here. And I, I just heard you were going to come to LA too in July. So yeah. I think that's going to happen this July, but when you come over, it's going to be, it's going to be amazing. Now oh, last year goodness. you had, um, I don't want to call it a setback because I actually think that it was a step forward in an interesting way, but you had a crazy accident last year. Yeah. Yeah. So January, through, what happened to you? Because I mean, we were invited on that trip. We were going to go. <laughs> oh my gosh, you would have been my carer. Um, so it, it feels crazy now in hindsight because you, you've hit the nail on the head. Now I can look at it and I actually think that was the, the making of my online career, which it kind of gives me shivers saying that because it, it was such a challenging, emotional, hard time, like so tough. And um, so for those of you who don't know, I was on a skiing trip. It was my second ever ski trip. I'm far from good. Um, but I had done a lot, a lot of lessons. I'm fiercely competitive. <laughs> it's just my nature. And when I do something, I want to get good at it. Um, so we were on our second ever ski trip in Japan, in the Seco, and I, I ruptured my ACL and my MCL and fractured my fibula. So it was a really, really nasty fall. And um, the funny thing is it wasn't award winning in terms of the fall itself. It looked tiny, um, but I heard it and I, my, my mind tricked itself. I was like, oh, maybe it was the snow that I heard and my ski was skidding on it, but I physically heard and I'm a, I'm okay, yes person. I've always been a yes person. And Alex is a boarder and he came over and he was like, Lil, are you okay? And I said, no. And he said, the moment he heard me say no, he was like, this is serious because I could badly cut myself, bruise myself. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> but with this, I was like, no. Um, so then I was, yeah, packaged up, <laughs> skied down by the ski ambulance people. Um, I remained in denial, which is the funniest thing as a physio. I... I'm so fiercely positive that I was like, I'll wake up tomorrow and it will be okay. I'll wake up tomorrow and it will be okay. So I wanted to continue the holiday. So we had another five days in the Seco. I was on my crutches with spikes on to stop myself from slipping. They kind of packaged me up. Um, I was offered a scan, but I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to scan it. I already know it's bad and I don't want to ruin our holiday. Um, so let's carry on. Let's just do what you need to do, which is package me up, basically brace me. We then went on to Tokyo. <laughs> I uh, set myself goals in Tokyo on crutches because they were so painful that I would do a hundred crutches and then take a break to so do a hundred, then take a break. Tokyo is a walking city, right? It's like London. You walk everywhere. So we're crutching around, crutching around. We were there for five days. So this will be nine days after the injury now. Didn't know I had fully ruptured it. We were still living in hope that, that I wouldn't, that I hadn't. Then we flew to uh, Dubai, flew home, and we landed. And my foot was no lie the size of a football. <laughs> it had blown up and it had turned a bit blue and red and because I'd had the, the brace on and I was like, that's not good. And um, reached out to my mum, who obviously knows things that are going on. And it then calmed down, went in for a scan, found out it was a total rupture. They said, we can operate right now in Dubai, or you can go back to London to the surgeons that I know through physio. Flew to London the next day, had the scan. It's a ruptured ACL. Fine. It's a ruptured MCL. The surgeon said to me, just as protocol, this is purely protocol, we're going to do a Doppler scan, which is to test for a blood clot, blood clots. He said, there's not going to be a blood clot, but we're going to do it by, by protocol. Went in, had it, all fine and dandy. The guy looked at me square in the eye and was like, when are you seeing your surgeon? 
I was like, I've just seen my surgeon. What do you mean? He was like, yeah, but when are you seeing him again? Are you seeing him right now? No, no, I'm not. I was like, can you just tell me straight? Like I'm a physio, what's going on here? He was like, you've got two blood clots in your leg and we need to act on this right now. So I was like, what, like all I know about blood clots from my experience is they're fatal. They can be fatal. You know, all it takes is for the blood clot to dislodge, travel up to your lungs, and then you could have big trouble. So I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I do? There was no nurse around. So he just had, had to inject me there and then. Um, with some blood thinners. So this kind of tiny little accident <laughs> in Japan, which just felt like a, had led to three months on crutches, um, losing, I would say 50% of my contracts because I couldn't fulfill them um, through Instagram and social media, losing a hell of a lot of money. Alex being in Dubai, me being in my sister's bedroom in London, we'd moved to Dubai shortly before. Um, I was stuck in a bedroom, couldn't get up and down the stairs, needed help to get in and out of the shower. Um, every, it was just, everything was broken. Like everything was turned on its head. It was the most challenging time ever because the one thing I knew as a physio is there's two things that are very, very troublesome and it's an ACL tear and an Achilles rupture. They're the two things that, you know, you're looking at years of rehab and, I couldn't do my YouTube videos. I couldn't do my Instagram videos. I couldn't earn money because I was supposed to be doing videos for brands. Like, what was I going to do? And I was, I was low. It was the first time I've actually been really quite low because um, I'm a positive person and I did not know which way to go. I didn't know which avenue I was thinking, should I go down more of a food route? But everything's always been exercise with a touch of food. Like, how am I going to earn money? How am I going to get back to Dubai to see my family? <laughs> like, it was just, it was really, really, really tough. And one of my best friends at the time, who's in the industry, in travel, said to me, you don't know this right now, but I promise you, you're going to look back in a year's time and this is going to be the making of you. And it forced me from this whirlwind of opportunity into this tiny corner of opportunity where I had just a few options and I had to force myself into those options. And it, it worked, you know, we're, we're two years down the line now or just, just under. Um, and I feel like the decisions that I made at that point to not feel sorry for myself from a long-term point of view, to show a journey whereby I literally channeled everything into healing, which I did. I didn't opt for surgery. We've ended up healing the ACL, which puts me in a under 1% category of people who ACL reconnects. I bought every book on nutrition I could find and have eaten in the best way to heal my body. I worked my ass off with rehab and it just shows that it is possible. Um, and that, it changed me as a person, which sounds very deep and crazy, but it, it really, really did. It made me aware of what my body and my mind are capable of. Um, and that's translated into business as well. So yeah, it was a tough time, but now I'm like, I'm not thankful it happened. I would not wish that on anyone, but I'm thankful how, how we managed to respond to it and, and the outcome. So how long were you out for? How long could you not make workout videos for? What was the, what was the process there? Real workout videos, actual follow alongs over six months. Yeah. A long time, near eight months, I would say. Um, and even now I, I'm doing videos now and I'll often, uh, my sister commented on it the other day in a live, I find myself excusing myself because I get embarrassed, which sounds really silly, but I'm still far weaker on my right side. And I'll sometimes, you know, jiggle a little bit and my knee will be like, um, and I'll be like, oh, sorry guys, this is my weak side. And she was like, stop saying that. You don't have to keep excusing yourself. You're doing really well. Um, you've improved a lot. Everyone has weaknesses of some sort. Like it doesn't matter. Um, but it's ingrained in me because I was so athletic and I was the girl who could do the jumps and, you know, like I was a real plyometrics type of girl. And now I, I can't do everything I used to, but that's okay. Um, but it made me stronger in, in other fields. I did, I was doing workout videos with my brace on. We called my brace Brucey. Um, so Brucey the brace was in workout videos with me, but I was so tired. I mean, I lost five to seven kg. I don't really weigh myself, but 
my, my leg in centimeters was like seven centimeters smaller in the space of three weeks. I lost like five to seven kg in two, three weeks because you're just not working it. I wasn't walking, you know, and when you're not walking, your muscle just goes like you've got none left. So I didn't really care about, you know, you, you stop caring about what you look like. You just want to be able to walk. <laughs> like I was like, I don't, I don't care if I don't have abs. I don't care if I don't have muscle. I just want function back. It's the basics of being able to get in and out of the shower, being able to walk, even in and out of bed, cook, you know, it really brings you back to basics again. But puts everything into perspective. It's like, uh, and your health is the most important thing. It's like oh, gosh, people, yeah. people out there, they're like, I want to look like this. I want to have abs. And they're getting so yeah. down. It's like, hey, just be grateful that you got two legs that are working that <laughs> yeah. from A to B. And by the yeah. way, wobble. No, I don't even have an injury and I still wobble. <laughs> so you're fine. But I have to say that I couldn't believe it because two months before when we met you guys in Dubai, I was telling you the story about what happened to me. Oh, yeah. Skiing accident. When I yeah. got taken down and uh, I went on a ski trip with Corey's family and I did my knee in. And I yeah. couldn't believe it because we were telling you this story. And then two months later, yeah. it was the same, but way worse than I did. Oh, wait. No, I remember because you were only doing upper body work. Yes. <laughs> and I felt so bad because I was like, I feel like I've like cursed this girl. <laughs> Because <laughs> like, and I, I had only done, I, I had a very, very slight ACL tear. It was like very, very yeah. slight, but like I couldn't, I couldn't do anything with my leg for like a good, like six weeks. And I was definitely yeah. not doing like workout, but yeah. I had like a little brace on. I just remember going, oh my God, like I remember telling Lily like about when I was skiing and how I messed up my leg and now she's really, um, <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I, you know, looking back now, it's, you know, people say, you know, you're having all of this success. But you had a, you know, you've been grinding at this for ages. Then you had a massive situation where you weren't even living with Alex, who was helping you, you know, with some of these things. You weren't able to make YouTube videos. Money's gone yeah. down. Like that just shows super resilience, grit, and determination. And it shows that you you were doing this for the right reasons. You know, like yeah. you say, like, well, you know, what if it doesn't work? I'm like, I don't have a plan B. I don't think I've ever had a plan B. I'm like, what do you mean if this doesn't work? Like, this is, this is what I do. Like, this is, this is my talent in life is talking and working out at the same time. Um, so yeah. I just want to congratulate you on like having that resilience and like pushing forward and, and continuing to go. So I'm Thank proud of you. you. There's one thing I've really learned from you, you know, that first time and Bex and I met, it would be about two years ago in Dubai and we, we just chatted for hours. Like, I think the boys were like, okay, you guys just chat away. Um, but you know, you're the most giving person and it is the definition of there's not just room for one person at the top. We can all grow up together. And I just think you are so focused on, you know, this is what I'm good at. This is what I'm going to do. And I know that's taken a lot of time and it's a personality thing with a learning thing, but that's where I can be quite weak. Sometimes I, you know, doubt myself and learning to believe in myself has been a really, really, really big journey because I would often say, you know, I've always got physio to fall back on. Should it, should it not work? Or I've got that degree and I've got this. And I remember you saying to me, stop saying that, you know, this is, this is you, this is, you're going to succeed in it. You need to give it everything. There doesn't need to be a plan B plan. Plan A is going to work. And I kind of need to hear that from someone like you who has made it work, particularly back then, you know, it was really early days for me and it, it wasn't really taking off, but I knew that I needed to keep going and I needed to hear it from someone who has done very well. So yeah, thank you basically. No, absolutely. I knew, I knew you were going to be able to go for it. It's been amazing. <laughs> Um, what, and what is coming up for you next? Like there is that they can join you for a live workout every single day right now in YouTube until the end of the month. Like, are you just seeing how this goes? Like what's the plan? Yeah. So we've got another seven live workouts left at the moment. And um, we've done a 14 day challenge and this, we've got seven left of them. Um, it's very structured in terms of we're making sure we're not just working out the same thing every single day. There's like a combination of hits, uh, no jumping hit as well, which is what a lot of apartment friendly workouts are going around at the moment. Um, we've also got resistance training, but lightweights if you don't have them, bags of rice or whatever, and Pilates. So that structure is still going for another seven days. 
we're going to see what happens. Um, yesterday was the first time where I think people were like, oh my gosh, we've only got seven days left with you. Like what's going to happen at the end? We, we don't know. They're going very, very well. Um, and I'm loving them. I'm really loving working out with the girls. Like it just feels amazing. The issue is they're so tiring. <laughs> so I love it because it's my own workout, but obviously then we're also filming other workouts. We're doing Instagram, we're doing YouTube, we're doing Facebook. So if we'll keep the dailies going, I'm not sure yet. We're going to see what happens and we might drop down to, you know, three or four a week or, or we might just go with pre-recorded, but we've set, we've got another seven days. So yeah, we'll see what happens. Well, you've got so many workouts on there. There's so many programs that people can do. Like, even if you don't do a live every single day for like, if you keep going, there's yeah. so much amazing content on there. So how can they find you? Plug all your things. Tell everybody. Oh, you are so sweet. Um, thank you. So it's the same across everything. It's just my name, Lily Sabri on um, Instagram, YouTube, Facebook. Um, that's L-I-L-L-Y-S-A-B-R-I. And then we have a private Facebook group as well. So for anyone who is doing my guides at the moment or my workouts, it's like the most incredible support network I could ever wish for. Like I log in every morning and I feel empowered. Um, and it's a place where women are sharing their own journey, their concerns, they're building each other up motivating each other and really applauding each other as well, which is so amazing. Um, so I often describe it as like a safe space where you can share your transformations without other people seeing and stuff. So that's uh, Lean with Lily Guides. So yeah, that's everything. Awesome, well, I'm gonna put all of the links below. I am so glad that we've done this. It's been a I know. few years, but I feel <laughs> like it's, it's come at the perfect time. Like this is when, you know, you were meant to be on the podcast. This is when we were meant to chat. And I'm really excited to see you, you know, whenever you do manage to get over to LA. So thank you so much for joining me. Lily, you're a superstar girl. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of It Takes Script. Make sure you go give Lily a follow. Go subscribe to her YouTube channel. And of course, leave us a review for the It Takes Script podcast. Podcast. We love you and we'll see you next week. Bye guys. I remember when I started a healthy lifestyle, you know, you think you can live best of both worlds is what you think you can do, right? You're like, yeah, I can go out and get hammered and then show up for a 5am spin class. No problem. Like,